I knew as a child that I wanted to be an astronaut, just like the explorers who set audacious goals, expected setbacks, but then reacted with passion and creativity and grit to make their dreams a reality. Houston now controlling. Atlantis begins its journey to shore up the International Space Station. The techniques that NASA uses to make the impossible possible can be used in any business, any business to succeed. Audacious goals can move your career forward. They'll move your company forward. And sometimes they are so audacious, they'll move a sector forward. Flying in space is an incredible opportunity. And I'll take you along on what that experience was like tonight so that you understand what it's like to ride a rocket into space, what it's like to live where there's no gravity. It's absolutely magical. And also pertinent to tonight, what it's like to see our beautiful Earth from space. So today I'll share with you kind of the explorer's mindset that I had and the practices that they used to make this moment happen. And I do that because the environment that we faced up there and its basic core attributes, unpredictable, complicated, fast-paced, dynamic, those are the exact same attributes as you face in today's business world. So let's relax, then we'll get serious again, but let's relax. Let's just have fun talking about space. Here I am waiting for my first launch. It's an, an, a sensory overload being in this magical place. At this point, we're moving Mach 25. That's 28,000 kilometers per hour. That's eight kilometers per second. That's seven times the speed of a bullet. That means we go around the world in 90 minutes. Every 24 hours, do you know how many sunrises you see? 16, and 16 sunsets per day. It's this bizarre life, very difficult life. The sun goes up and down and up and down. So the question is, you are in a battle right now. And every time we fly humans in space, we're in a battle because it's so difficult. Explorers do not hesitate. They innovate in a timely manner. Maybe they have an equipment failure on a mountain or they're sailing across the ocean and there's a, a major storm. Or maybe they come across a crevasse when they're crossing the Arctic. They don't dwell, they don't mope. They come up with creative solutions in a timely manner. And this is directly, directly transferable to your personal and professional lives. Having goals and dreams and dreaming big. You can see in 1964, I was at Disneyland in California with my sister, already thinking about being an astronaut. You have to forgive those shorts with the vertical stripes. My, uh, my mommy picked those, but I already wanted to be an astronaut. And so as the years passed, I started drawing it over and over again. And so for the next 20 years, this was my dream. This was my goal. And I did everything I could to prepare my application that I would eventually send to NASA. But two months later, a very plain, very thin, very small envelope showed up in the mail with this letter. And it says, I regret to inform you that we don't want you. And so I was mad, wasn't totally surprised, but I wasn't just paralyzed or devastated. I really thought about it for a couple of days and moved on. I didn't dwell on it. And so in hindsight, not at the time, but in hindsight, I realized that in wanting to be this explorer, I was already adapting some of the techniques they use. Whenever you have these setbacks in life, on this pathway in life, up to your dream to climb this mountain, you have to decide what to do when you fall down. And so I had fallen down and I decided to get up and press on rather than retreating. And so I developed a plan with actions in it to gather more skills and more education and to become resilient and it was really humiliating too to have to go tell my parents, you know, I got rejected again or my friends. But yeah, I never let go of the dream. I never let go of the dream. I held on to it with a passion. Um, and so I would really encourage you to do that in your personal or professional goals too. So I worked really hard to make myself better. I was not about to take no. And every time I got one of those rejections, I said to myself, to NASA, I'll be back. These explorers taught me how to live life and how to overcome difficulties. They, recall, set their goals audaciously high. They dreamed of success. They aren't paralyzed by all the bad things that can happen. They dream of success. And that's what all of us have to do throughout our life 
when we try challenging things. They pursue their goals with passion and perseverance and resilience over long periods of time. It's the magic fuel. What is that? It's grit. In the digital era, in this era where we're working in distant places, you have to come up with new ways to do that. Call your, your uh, teammates more often and don't just start the conversation off with business things. Ask them, how's your family doing? Where, where are you traveling to this year? What did you do last weekend? Get to know your teammates. I said, what high school did you go to? He goes, Leland. I go, I went to Leland. And he says to me, isn't it so cool that the San Francisco 49er football team has a graduate from our school, Craig Jones. I go, that is so cool. That is cool. And he goes, I think we had a national too, but I can't remember his name. <laughs> when we're working together, being so close to your teammates creates efficiency when things are good. And when things are really bad, it makes you resilient. And that's where we have really benefited from this camaraderie. And the testament to how extreme our teams are is that it's widely considered that NASA's greatest achievement is the Apollo 13 flight where we saved the crew.